After your first week of an introduction to fecal sludge management, hopefully you feel confident to explain what fecal sludge and fecal sludge management are. The goal of the first week was to get you immersed in the topic, because once you can understand and define the problem you are working on, then you can start thinking of effective and relevant solutions. You should now have an understanding of the global significance of fecal sludge management, as 40% of the world's population are using on-site sanitation systems, and that number will continue to grow with increasing urbanization. You know what fecal sludge is, how it differs from other types of sludge, factors influencing the wide range of variability, and characteristics that will be important for us to consider with treatment objectives. Did you have a chance to look at the examples provided in this report? You also learned about how a complete sanitation service chain for fecal sludge management is different than for sewer-based systems. In contrast to flush and forget, it is about interactions between people at every step in the chain. Along with this, you also learned about weak links in the service chain. You saw multiple examples with pictures and a video of our FAME and UACT research projects. Can you already identify some of the problems that need to be addressed? Lack of financial resources, lack of existing infrastructure, lack of legal and regulatory frameworks, building pit latrines without thinking what happens when they become full. Hopefully, you are also starting to think about the different magnitudes of problems that need to be addressed. The immediate problem of getting excreta out of communities and cities, and longer term, the most sustainable, globally relevant solutions. On-site sanitation could provide a less expensive and more sustainable solution that is less resource and energy intensive, but only if every step in the service chain is managed adequately. Concepts you are learning about for applying sustainable citywide fecal sludge management include the engineering design approach to think logically about first defining treatment objectives, then quantifying and characterizing waste streams that will need to be treated, and then considering all of the design variables when selecting and designing treatment technologies to meet these goals and demands. In week two, we will present fundamentals you need before you can start applying this approach, which will include treatment objectives, resource recovery, a method to select treatment products with the greatest market potential, and how to quantify and characterize fecal sludge on a citywide basis or scale that's relevant to the design of management solutions. In week four, you will learn more about all of the different types of design variables that you must consider and how a planning framework can help you to think about them and at which step you need to consider them. However, you are also now aware that solutions are not only about technology. Finding solutions are at the bottleneck of planning, management, and technology. This is why the concept of an integrated systems approach as laid out in the fecal sludge management book and this course is so important to follow. Hopefully by now you've had a chance to download and review the book and see that there are three distinct sections on technology, planning, and management and also how they are all integrated. Applying an integrated planning approach at the city level is imperative. The entire enabling environment must be considered. In particular, management and financial schemes must be defined and validated prior to making final decisions on technical options. To demonstrate the importance of planning and management for success, you saw examples of mistakes people have made. For example, when not considering the local context, a lack of institutional frameworks, clear roles and responsibilities, operations and maintenance, and planning. In week four, we will present more details, including an integrated planning approach, legal frameworks, and enforcement. You also learned about what is working and what is not working in the fecal sludge management service chain in three different cities, Hanoi, Kampala, and Toyokawa. In Hanoi, more people have access to toilets, most households have a septic tank, and there are over 40 collection and transport companies, 
However, there is nowhere legal to discharge. How will that change with the new Decree 80? In contrast, in Kampala, there is fecal sludge treatment, but access to toilets is frequently crowded and unhygienic, treatment plants are at or over capacity, and fecal sludge in informal settlements is frequently directly discharged to the environment. How will their sanitation master plan change that? In Toyokawa, where 30% of sanitation is met with on-site solutions, 100% of excreta is safely managed. Have you started thinking about why different aspects work in each of these cities? So hopefully you understand now the scale of the problem. Did we overwhelm you? Don't worry, solutions happen step by step. And now we can start moving ahead learning about deriving solutions. What are steps you think you could already take in your city? Do you have any ideas? Please add them to the forum for discussion. And please also be sure to review the additional resources we have provided on the platform. So now we'll move on to week two, where we present more of the fundamental knowledge that you need to start designing and selecting treatment technologies, including treatment objectives, quantification and characterization, resource recovery, and we will introduce you to technologies that are used to get sludge from on-site containment to treatment plants. Thanks for joining. See you in week two.